So AI for Bharat is a research lab in the Vadwani School of AI at IIT Madras. And our mission here is to ensure that for Indian languages, we build AI technology, which is at par with English, right? And the way we want to go about that is by making open source contributions on datasets, tools, and models, all developed for Indian languages for the ecosystem to use and then build solutions on top of them. So let's start by talking about the diversity in India. Right? One lens through which we can look at diversity is language. Right? So in India, we have 1500 plus languages. Uh, of which around 22 languages are official languages. And if you look at the top few languages, they probably cover around 1 billion speakers, but then we have a tail for the remaining population. Right? And uh, if you look at uh, any two people randomly, because you have a lot of migration in the country, people move around for jobs, and it's very uh, likely that when two random people meet on the street or if they want to engage in a transaction, they might not know each other's language. And we face this on a daily basis, whether we are at the bus stop, airport, train station and so on, where we don't speak each other's language, right? So language diversity, while it's uh, sort of a uh, good characteristic of India, right? Uh, we take pride in our diversity, but at times due to diversity, we have unique challenges which may not be present in the West. Right? And that leads to unique resource problems, unique technological problems which have been looked through with the lens of India and see what kind of solutions we can come up with. So one of the most exciting things for me as a researcher and for many of my students working on AI in India is that we get to look at problems which are very different from the rest of the world. right? And there are very few parts in the world which are as multilingual as India, right? And which have as much demographic diversity as India has. And a lot of this leads to very unique problems, right? So I'll tell you one example. I'll try to walk you through a couple of such examples, right? Now, when we talk about inclusion, it's very, one of the important things is that, uh, or one of the important use cases that we were looking at is financial inclusion of rural women or digital financial inclusion of rural women, right? That means can applications like UPI payments work seamlessly for rural women while using their voice? They should just be able to speak and say transfer X amount or check my balance and so on, right? And now one of the challenges here is that collecting data from that demographic is very hard because given the cultural context of India, many of them very shy. They do not want to participate in such uh, data collection activities. They might have social restrictions on participating in such channels. Now, how do you overcome this? Right? So, one of the things that we're trying to do is bootstrap this data by synthetic data collection. Right? So, now we have models which can generate their own data. Right? So, you can generate uh, data in certain voices. So, if you're able to sample just a few women which belong to the rural population that we are aiming for, right? because it's very hard to get a large number of women to participate. But if you can get order 20, 30 women to participate, and just take small amount of data, right? Because they will not be able to participate for an hour or so, but maybe just a few sentences from them. Now, can we use that to create more synthetic data for that demographic, which would then help us in building models which work better for that demographic? Now, this is a very uniquely Indian problem, right? Because anywhere else, if you look at it, of course, data collection is expensive, it takes time consuming and so on, right? So that might, it might be hard. But data collection becoming hard because of the cultural context that some people can participate or some people are more willing to participate, some people are not. And then we need to do something special for that. And that solution needs to be built and you have to be creative about it. How do you create synthetic data? What is the right amount of data to collect so that it can bootstrap more data and so on, right? So that's one very unique problem that uh, we encountered. Another uh, example is that uh, we're working with the All Initiative, which is trying to uh, improve the oral reading fluency of children in uh, government schools. Right? Now again, a very uniquely Indian setup here is that uh, we cannot, either from an affordability point of view or from a reliability point of view, we cannot have the model running on the cloud. Right? Because there may not be a reliable internet connection or even if it's there, it's not affordable. So you need a solution which works on the local machine. And these are not going to be high-end computers. These may be computers which are at least three to four years older. And so you have to work with those constraints of compute power, RAM, and so on. So now this requires us to innovate on the side of building very small models, right? While the world is moving towards larger and larger models, we need to innovate on building very small models which can work in these contexts, right? So these kind of unique challenges which come from difficulties on the ground or difficulties in the Indian context are uh, very unique to India, right? And that being in India, uh, it's very exciting to be able to work on these challenges 
uh, and have research agenda, define a research agenda around there on which PhD students could have their thesis or master's students could work on projects and so on. Another interesting problem is the problem of code mixing in India. Yeah, this is almost uh, uh, a very, uh, I find it very funny that uh, initially when ChatGPT came out or some of the powerful LLMs came out, uh, people were using them for building solutions for India. And they were being used in what are known as this rag style bots where a person comes and maybe asks a query in Hindi. Uh, this query gets translated to English because at initially most of the LLMs worked much better in English. Now the reasoning happens in English, that means it takes a document and tries to reason based on the query and then produces an output in English. Now this output gets translated into Hindi using our translation system. Right? And the feedback that we got from the Crown is that, hey, your translations are too pure for my end user to understand. And I'll give you an example of that, which is, Pariksha Kendra Pe Aapke Parchan Patra Ki Jaj Ki Jayegi. Now this is a very well-formed Hindi sentence, but unfortunately in India, most people don't speak pure Hindi. What they would be more comfortable is with a code-mixed version of this, which is, Exam Center Pe Aapka I Card Check Kiya Jayegi. Now this has a lot of English and Hindi mixed words. Now this is a very uniquely Indian problem, right? Because a good English, a good translation system is not enough. A good translation system which can then be sort of steered in certain directions that, hey, I want a translation, but I want it to be informal. I want it to be code mixed. I want it to use a certain gender. All of these are very uniquely Indian problems. And we have uh, students working on research problems which are not being looked at so much in the West, but these are very important for us to solve. Right? The same problem arises when you're doing speech synthesis. Now, if you look out a speech synthesis system in English, it's essentially only going to generate speech in English, in one language. But again, in the most Indian languages, if you want a bot kind of setup, you would end up generating speech in bilingual, at least English in one Indian language, or maybe mixing multiple Indian languages also, right? And these kind of problems don't get looked at in the Western context because it's not, does not a problem does not exist for them, right? But it's very uniquely Indian where we have to generate content which is code mixed either at the output or we have to deal with content which is code mixed in the input, right? So these uh, lead to very unique research problems which our students get to work on and they're very excited about it. So one of the concerns that I have is that while we have a lot of focus on developing the technology, advancing it, we do not have a lot of focus on educating the end user about it, right? And a lot of, in my view, a lot of concerns around safety, privacy, etc. They would sort of become less intense if we do a good job of educating the end user, right? So example, let's take something which is not using AI, like credit cards, right? There are frauds which happen even in the credit card space, right? And how are you mitigating it? By constantly educating the users about trying to make them understand what is good, what is bad, what is real, what looks fishy, right? And the same kind of education if you also do in the context of AI, and hey, AI models can hallucinate, right? So better verify it, whatever answer you get, maybe ask for some references for it, right? And that's how you sort of start building an intuition of how to use AI, right? Don't trust the answers completely. It might make some mistakes, use some human judgment, ask for references and things like that. So we are not doing enough on educating people around AI and trying to look at this entire safety, privacy, other concerns through a technology lens. Let's just make the technology more robust that all of these concerns go away. But there's always going to be a human who is using the technology, right? So you have to do something on that part also. And I'm at least happy that in the India AI mission, there's a lot of emphasis on skilling, right? And a part of the skilling is not just the high-end skilling, which is the model developers, the solution builders, but also on the skilling of people who are going to use AI. Right? So a lot more needs to be done there. Uh, so now let's come to the question of what next, right? The world in the past three years has been very excited about LLMs, right? Since the, uh, since the arrival of ChatGPT. Now, as a country, we need to do something about building our own Indic LLM. And there again, a lot of uh, there again, one place where we are really lacking is the data infrastructure. Do we really have the 10 to 20 trillion tokens in Indian languages to build a good foundational model of a respectable size which can do better than any of the existing models on Indian languages? Right? And that is what we want to work on. And a lot of that work will be driven by the IN22 work that we have done so far. Right? So can we take documents which are very knowledge dense, right? documents about history, say the first war of independence, uh, the battle of Halvigati, 
which are written in english can we translate them to indian languages and create content in indian languages which can then be fed to building an indic lm right so that's the third thing that we want to focus on and not just building but be very careful about how are we going to evaluate them how are we going to make sure that these llms work well on queries which are very uniquely indian one such sample query is in a village in dharwad what happens on the day of diwali from 6 am in the morning to 11 pm in the night right can we build an llm which can answer this question accurately not just for one district but maybe for every district every village in the country right so that's what we want to work towards in the next 3 years